This is His Word Unveiled. Um, okay, we have been in the book of Exodus. If you've been following along my videos, you know what you need to do. So I'm going to give you the chapter that you're to read, and you can go do that. We are going to start up. Today we are reading Exodus chapter 7. So go for it. Spend that time with you and God reading chapter 7 on your own without distractions, ready, listening, hearing, letting God speak, teach, and grow you. Um, love this journey. Love that, that we get this personal time. I just finished reading mine. Um, that chapter, I just finished having that time with the Lord, me and him. So you go do that. Have that time with the Lord. Exodus chapter 7, then meet back up with me. Lord, thank you. I pray that you truly increase, that you um, you strip everything away from who we are, from from just our perspectives, our thoughts, our feelings. Just strip, strip us down, um, make us bare, make us empty so that we can be full of you in this moment for this time. And I pray that what you fill us with, that we can walk out and live out the rest of the day in your power, with your truth shaping our minds, our hearts. Um, just doing what you do best and, and just being a God of transformation, a God of miracles, a God of movement, a God of connection. Father, that's who you are. We are choosing to see you today, choosing to hear you, um, choosing to be moved by you. Um, we speak the name of Jesus upon this time, upon this moment that we give to you. In your name, amen. Okay, Exodus chapter 7. So we have been talking about this incredible story of Exodus where the Lord calls Moses to, um, to approach Pharaoh and tell him that, that God wants his people out of bondage, that, that we are commanding, that the Lord says, let my people go, let um, the children of Israel be brought up out of Egypt and allowed to go into the wilderness to meet and to worship the Lord. So he is called Moses on this journey to approach Pharaoh, to, to lead the children out of Israel. Moses and Aaron are working together in this. Um, the Lord has told Moses that Pharaoh will, um, his heart will be hardened, that he will refuse, um, but that God has a plan through this. So we see in chapter seven, um, it begins like this. Then the Lord said to Moses, see, I make you as God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall speak to Pharaoh, that he let the sons of Israel go out of his land. Verse 3 says, But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that I may multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So God is doing the hardening, yes, but this is God seeing an opportunity seeing that Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. We see over in verse 14, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. So I've had people ask me before, um, well, God is controlling and God is making him do evil, and why would he harden Pharaoh's heart? Um, what, what the Lord is just put in my heart in reading this is that God sees us and he knows and though Pharaoh's heart, though he is stubborn, though he is apathetic, though he is not wanting anything to do with the Lord, God sees that and he sees that as an opportunity to allow the Egyptians to see him and his power and to show the Israelites the strength of his power, the strength of his hand, um, the work of his hand. So he is seeing and knowing that Pharaoh's heart is already hard. God doesn't need to harden his heart. It's already hard. And God is choosing to use that, choosing to use that and understanding that that Pharaoh um, wants nothing to do with God. He chooses to have his heart hardened. So the Lord coming in on the scene with that, using that as an opportunity and like, hey, if he's going to harden his heart, then I'm going to allow this to be my platform to come in and show them what's up, show them what I'm capable of doing, showing them these miracles and these signs, these wonders that get, can be performed, that other people will know that I am the Lord, that they will know that I am for real. When, when, um, when I give a covenant, when I want to bless, when I am faithful, I want those things to be seen, and, and his power is seen through this, through this time, and knowing that Pharaoh's heart is hardened. But that doesn't catch God off guard. He sees it, and he runs with it. He uses this as an opportunity to, to speak his love, to speak his provision um, more powerfully and clearly to his people. So it says that Pharaoh's heart, I will harden Pharaoh's heart that I may multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. 
So because he is refusing, more and more can be seen and experienced. Um, skipping to verse 5, it says, The Egyptians shall, Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. So again, just allowing his power to be seen, allowing his power to be known. Um, it's so much more, there's so there's so much more ground for, for God's power to be seen. Um, and, and using it this way and being able to, to perform those signs and wonders um, in spite of Pharaoh, this king of Egypt, holding his own power, being against it, then if Pharaoh would just be like, sure, let the people go, there would be, there would be nothing in that, that the Israelites would just be like, oh, Pharaoh's such a great guy letting us go, instead of, oh, God is such a great God who is pursuing us and loving us and revealing his power and, and his hand being all over this and pulling us out and drawing us in to himself. This shows God's fight for his people. This shows his love. Um, and his pursuit of his people. Then in verse 6 we see, So Moses and Aaron did it, as the Lord commanded them, thus they did. And this is huge as we read about um, just Moses feeling insecure and fear and all these excuses that he's making like, Oh, I can't, you know, I can't speak, they won't listen, I can't do this, I can't, all of this stuff. And then we see in verse 6 though, that they did as the Lord commanded. So Moses is choosing obedience. And that is what we need to focus on. Not not now um, that, that he was fearful, that he did deal with this insecurity, but that in spite of it, regardless of it, he is choosing to move forward. It doesn't matter what you struggle with or what I struggle with, what we deal with, what emotions we feel, what what conflicts rise up. It What matters is what we are doing, what, what our response is. Um, my pastor always says, your response is your responsibility, and that's huge. That's huge. So props to, to Pastor Daryl Booker um, with, that, with that line, with that powerful truth, and, and that our response is, is um, our responsibility, and, and, and that's what it is. Moses dealt with so much, but his response was, I'm going to choose to obey. I'm going to move forward, and in verse 6, we see that, as the Lord commanded them, Thus they did, Moses and Aaron moving forward, listening to the Lord. So in verse 7, we see that Moses was 80 years old, Aaron was 83 years old when they approached Pharaoh. So when this began, they weren't, you know, young and, you know, these, these young adults full of, full of energy and, well, they could have been full of energy, but my point is, an 80-year-old and an 83-year-old about to bring up a whole nation out of the land of Egypt. Um, crazy. Okay, so then the Lord speaks to Moses and Aaron, and they say, they, the, Lord, the Lord tells them both, when Pharaoh, we see this in verse 9, when Pharaoh speaks to you saying, work a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, take your staff, you know, and perform this miracle. Throw it on the ground, let it be a serpent, just as the Lord told Moses to do at the beginning. So he's saying, when Pharaoh says, work a miracle, so God is letting them know that when they approach Pharaoh, Pharaoh is going to say, okay, show me a miracle. And you almost hear this, um, again, this arrogance in, in that and in saying, work a miracle. Um, but God knew and God says, when Pharaoh did this, I want you to throw it down and, and this is going to turn into a serpent. And that's exactly what happened. But then in verse 11, we see, because um, Pharaoh came at it like, okay, work a miracle. Because he knew that he could call on his wise men, his sorcerers, his magicians in the land of Egypt. And that they could do just as he saw Moses and Aaron doing. And that's exactly what happened. So, so Pharaoh said this, work a miracle. Aaron threw it on the ground. His staff became a serpent right before him. And then in verse 11, it says, Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had said. This is huge, that they all are doing the same thing. Aaron throws his down, it's a serpent. All the, the sorcerers, magicians, all of them of Egypt threw theirs down, and they became serpents. Pharaoh is seeing this. Pharaoh was being a smart aleck and saying, hey, work a miracle, knowing that his magicians could come in and do the same thing. So he wasn't doing it to be amazed. He wasn't telling him to do that, to work a miracle, to be amazed. He was doing it so that he could show them, hey, you have nothing on what I have. I'm holding this power. Check out my magicians. Check out what they can do. 
you've got nothing. So this all happens, yet when all of them were serpents, we see then at the end of verse 12, Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. We cannot lose sight of that. And more importantly, we can't lose sight of the very next verse says that Pharaoh hardened his heart. So he hardened his heart after seeing Aaron's staff slash serpent swallow up all of the magician's staffs, all of them, yet it didn't phase Pharaoh. His heart was hardened. He chose to see, oh, and, and how often do we see this where we're like, oh God, that was so great what you did. But, oh, I've seen somebody else do that too. Or, oh, I've seen the goodness of other people just do that. Or, oh, I've seen people bless me in that way before. So we diminish almost the power and the goodness of God when we see that other people, you know, can do that or other things that things can happen like that without us seeking the Lord or without us seeing it as a blessing from God where we get so desensitized. Um, we get so numb. We get so just, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't even phase us. It doesn't reach our hearts because we're just like, oh, we've seen that before where we don't see it as an act of God. We, we don't see it as a miracle. We don't see it as God's hand all over it. And when we get like that and when we snub it and say, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's not a miracle. Oh, it can just happen. Oh, it's just coincidence. Oh, it's just luck or whatever we may call it. Um, with that mindset, with, with choosing not to see it as what it is, an act of God in our lives, then we, we see, we miss, we miss seeing when God's power swallows up the power of the world. We miss when, when the blessing actually surpasses this luck of the world or, or by coincidence or, oh, oh, you know, this is just a good thing that happened or whatever it may be. And Pharaoh missed it after he saw Aaron's swallowed up. Yes, they're both doing the same. But Aaron's swallowed it up. God's power always surpasses. We can't, nothing can compare to his power. Even these magicians, even, even these people working this, this magic of their own, this, this dark magic. But Pharaoh, um, because his heart was hardened, because he chose to just want to one-up somebody, that he's denying anything that, that appears um, um, extraordinary, it's, you know, that appears... Um, just above above what what his own magicians can do and what what he can come up with himself so pharaoh's heart is stubborn it is hard through this so um then god is speaking to moses and he's saying okay this is what i want you to do and he starts speaking of the first plague and turning the nile river into blood now the, the nile river is so important so huge all the egyptians use this um for water for cleaning the fish you know and eating everything their life sources in the Nile River and so the Lord said this is this is what's gonna happen you know and Pharaoh when Pharaoh refuses because his heart is hard and when he does this this is what I want you to do and God lays it all out and in verse 19 we see then the Lord said to Moses say to Aaron take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt over their rivers their streams and their pools over all their reservoirs of water that they may become blood, and there will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. So um, they did as God commanded. Um, he lifted up his staff, struck the water, and all the water that was in the Nile was turned to blood, it says in verse 20. It says the fish died, the Nile became foul, so the Egyptians could not drink water. The blood was through all the land of Egypt, we read. Then in verse 22, it says, but the magicians of Egypt did the same with their secret arts. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had said. So we see again that Pharaoh is seeing, oh, yeah, that's something special, but you know what? My magicians can do the same thing. It's, it may be special, but it's nothing extraordinary. It's nothing that, that my people can't do. It's nothing that my power cannot, cannot do. And so he's just saying, look, the, the, I'm not impressed because I can come up with something just as good. Because I hold enough power and might and, and, and magic that, that I can cause this to happen as well. So he is refusing to see the power of God because he is lifting himself up. He is, he is um, just choosing to be stubborn, to be hard, and to be apathetic, to, to not find the wonder and, and the amazement in what God is showing and what God is doing. So he has his magicians do the exact same thing, which is, 
kind of crazy because what this is is harming the whole land of Egypt. I mean, it's taking away their food and their water source and, and everything. And, and so he is just wanting his magicians to come in and do the same thing to cause more, more chaos, conflict, taking away from, from the actual life source of his people, of his land. Um, that's, that's what happens though when, when this arrogance and when this, um, this pride, this, this, this power hungry mentality um, comes about. And in verse 23, we even see this just not caring attitude, this, this apathy. Um, in verse 23, it says, Then Pharaoh turned and went into his house with no concern, even for this. So all the Egyptians dug around the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the Nile. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. So this is a week, going on a week, where, where their water source, where everything is turned into blood. And it says that Pharaoh just went into his house with no concern. This is so... This is so important to see when we when we get like this, when we get when we get so arrogant, when we get so into ourselves, he's just turning away. He doesn't want to see anything, any goodness of the Lord, anything that the Lord is doing. He doesn't want to hear anything. And I see that in our world that people get so angry and they get so fed up with Christians speaking of the word and they're so against them and against the word or against the Lord himself, not wanting to hear, not wanting to know, not wanting to, they just don't care. They're so apathetic. They get so angry about it. And it says Pharaoh just went into his house without a concern with no concern, understanding that the whole land of Egypt is being affected by this, by um, Pharaoh's stubbornness, by his hard um, heart that, that he is displaying. Because he is, that God is, God's hand is on this and causing this, this Nile River, this source of life for them to turn to blood. And, and the whole land of Egypt is being affected by this being affected by um, by having no food, no water, no no clean anything. Everything's foul, it smells, it's dirty, it's, it's useless. And Pharaoh doesn't care. How many times are we stuck in sin? How many times do we get just in this rut of being angry or grumpy or complaining or, or whatever we are and dealing with our own junk, even in the midst of, of addiction or, or moping around and suffering or whatever it may be. How many times do we just get there? We get stuck there. We start acting like we don't care and we don't get how many people are affected by that. How many people that, that, that this, you know, the smell of our attitude is just infecting other people and how many people are, are being discouraged or being brought down or, or seeing and losing hope by seeing us walk around like we're, we're just bound. We're bound to this suffering. We're bound to this anger. We're bound to this unforgiveness. We're bound to whatever it is that we're dealing with. We have to put ourselves in Pharaoh's position and, and really think, okay, um, have we been a Pharaoh? Have we been hard hearted? Have we been just, I don't care? Have we been lazy? Have we been whatever? And, and are we stuck in that? Can we, can we stop and just look around us for a second and see, see who's around us and see how our attitudes and how our way of living is affecting other people? May we never just turn and go into our own homes and, and say, I don't care. It's no concern to me. If, if they're watching me and they're being discouraged or if they're losing hope or if they're deciding to live their lives like this because they're seeing me live, I don't care. That's on them. May we never, ever get there. Never. Let's take a step back. Let's really think about how we're living and how it's affecting other people and, and to choose to see God, um, God's hand at work and, and to choose to 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 sit back and see to to adore to be amazed to see the wonder to see to see the power of God and what he's capable of doing and and how he's trying to get our attention how he's trying to break down our walls so that we can see so that we can see him for who he is and know that he is God almighty and know that he is Lord he is Jehovah he is the God who is calling us to himself and, and would choose and have a desire to do anything it takes to get our attention. Anything it takes for us to be out, um, out of bondage, out of this captivity that we're living in. That he'll do whatever it takes to bring us into freedom in him so that we can live abundantly and, and beautifully and powerfully in him. Um, yes. May we just be amazed by who he is. Okay, that is all I got for you. That concludes Exodus chapter 7. I'm sure there's so much more 
that we can get out of this. So, so just go back, skim through, um, grab a hold, get it stuck in your heart. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep listening. I'm sure there's so much more he wants to unveil and reveal to you personally. So let him do that very thing. Take him at his word. Keep seeking him throughout the rest of this day. Thank you so much for joining me. That's all for this chapter. We'll continue into more plagues, more of God showing himself and displaying his power in unbelievable ways. So join me um, in my next video. I will see you soon.